I'm Susan. Welcome to Decorating Magic. I'm a decorator and I want to show you some of my tricks. Today we're going to make this beautiful pumpkin arrangement for your Thanksgiving table. I chose a pumpkin this year for my container because I like unusual containers. It makes it not just a centerpiece but a conversation piece. Now I chose these particular kinds of pumpkins because they're low. These are called fairy tale or Cinderella pumpkins and you can get them at your local farmers market or your local pumpkin patch. And really, any dining room arrangement should be low so that people can have a conversation and see each other. Because um, really, if you have to take the arrangement off the table, what's the point? All right, let's talk about this little pumpkin here. All right, I just use little fall flowers that I got at the florist. These are just marigolds. And these are millet. These fun little things are called crapspedia. <laughs> That's hard to say. Um, and these little balls here are called billy bobs or crocosmia. I also got some little china berries here and a few things from my yard. This is Pachysandra. It's just a little ground cover. And this pretty little white flower here is called Japanese Anemone. Every time I make an arrangement, I go through my yard first and see what I already have. Uh, the Japanese Anemone I've used before, and frankly, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I've got plenty, so if it starts to wilt, I'll just go snatch some more. This fun little vine is called Jackson Vine. Uh, the Latin name is Smilax. And again, this is from my yard. And the thing that's great about this is that it doesn't wilt. The, le the leaves don't curl up for several days. And it looks nice just underneath things. You can put it in it too, but it doesn't bend well. So it makes a nice little cushion. Now this pumpkin I've already carved out. You can see it wasn't any harder than any pumpkin to carve out. This is the wet foam we're going to use inside our pumpkin. Uh, there's two different kinds of foam, dry foam and wet foam. The dry foam is for artificial flowers and the wet foam, of course, is for fresh. Now, it needs to soak for at least 30 minutes in the sink so that's nice and wet. We may be using some other things like a floral wire. And this is just a little floral pick. It's just a little wooden pick with some wire on it that you can wrap around a delicate stem so you can stick it in. And one thing to remember, when you get home from the store with your flowers, get them in water right away. Use these little packets of floral preservative. They'll give you that at the florist. And another thing that's important is that you need to make a maintenance cut under the water. And just put the stems of the flowers in the sink of water and cut them. And you're just cutting the end off. You're just making it so that the flowers are drinking up the water. Now, let's look at the flowers I've selected for our pumpkin today. This beautiful stuff is called coxcomb. This is called Celosia, these are Freesia, and these are Dahlias. I'm also using these berries called China Berry, and these fun little Billy Bobs that are called Crocosmia, and then there's some more of the Crepsadia. And this stuff is called Hanging Amaranthus, and it's very important in our arrangement today is because it helps keep it low. It's doing the same thing as the millet did on my first pumpkin. All right, let's put the foam in the pumpkin. I usually just kind of hold it up and kind of see about where it needs to be. And this stuff cuts very easily. Now I'm just gonna jam it down in there. I might need to trim a little more. There. All right, I'm gonna clear off the table here so I have some room to work. So we've got our foam jammed down into our pumpkin. I made some smaller cuts and jammed it in there. And we're ready to start putting some flowers in. Now I always like to start my arrangements on the outside. So that means we will be using this, the hanging amaranthus. And this is one of those that has a weak stem. So we're gonna to wanna to use one of our little picks. We just put the pick next to the stem and wrap it around like that. And I'm going to put these kind of in the four corners. I've already got picks in these. Make sure the stem goes down into the foam because that's where the water will get. Will be. All right, now we have that. I'm going to start with my, the dahlias next. I'm going to start uh, using them in little clusters of two and three and four and start filling in. Now these have a pretty good sturdy stem. Before you put a flower in, examine them, make sure there's any bad parts you pull off. 
This one has a few little spots in the back. You don't want to spoil your arrangement. Okay, now we're going to clip them. I think I need to make them a little bit shorter because I want them to be down low. I'm going to continue with some more dahlias. Also, take off the foliage. We'll use other foliage. Most plants are either good for their foliage or for their bloom, but not usually both. All right, now I'm going to start adding the coxcomb, but I want to show something to you first. This one was a little bit bent, so I just took an ordinary cooking skewer and some of our floral wire and tapped it around. That way I didn't lose one of my big flowers. But I'm going to need to chop it with a good pair of clippers. All right, here comes the coxcomb. Oh, that's so, going to be so pretty. I'm going to use three of these in my arrangements. Because actually, I'm going to be making three of these arrangements. Because I'm going to use it on a 25-foot table. And that's a good trick to know. If you've got a huge, long table like that, make one big one and then two smaller ones and kind of set them out. I kind of do things in threes and fives. Although I did four corners. All right, I'm going to fill in with some of the freesia. This also has a really pretty grass-like leaf. And I love the little buds. I should have done that to you. Here, let me show you. Look how pretty those colors are together. And again, I'm just sort of spreading it around the pumpkin a little bit. Because the other thing to know about a centerpiece is that you see it from all angles. I hate to waste little things like this, so when I'm making an arrangement, I always keep other little vases around and make little tiny arrangements that you could then sit on your buffet or just around the house in the bathroom. There's always leftover flowers. I'm going to put one more of these in here and then I think I'm going to start putting in some of my greenery filling in some of the holes. This is Pachysandra. It's from my yard. It's a ground cover. It's very common and it does well in a floral arrangement. Our goal is to cover up all of that foam. So, but because flowers are so expensive, I use as much free stuff as possible. And at the end, I'll go around with some moss and just kind of fill in any places that I've missed. That way I look nice and full. This is called Celosia. I have to be careful with this because it's kind of spiky and I don't want to get it too tall. So let me give it a spin so you can see what it's looking like on all the sides. It's looking good, but we still need some more stuff. Okay, I'm going to use some of my Jackson Vine to place down in the middle here. Cover things up a little bit. Just give it a nice little greenery. And then I'm going to start putting in some of my China Berry. That has a good, strong, sturdy stem, so 
that just goes right in. I like to put it around. I like it draping over the edge too. It's a nice pop of green color. I need to trim that one. I don't have very much of that crop of speedia left, so I'm just going to use one because I've got two other arrangements to make. I'm going to put it in the middle. I'm going to pull that off. That one looks like it's a little bit gone. All right, I'm going to turn this around and start seeing where else I need to fill in. I'm going to get one other thing, the Billy Bob. I'm going to put three in. And now I am going to fill in with a few more dahlias and then I'm going to put in some uh, moss to fill up all the little gaps. All right, now I've got the flowers pretty well covered and I'm going to go back with this preserved moss. You can buy this at the craft store. I'm just going to tear little pieces of it and stick it in wherever you see the green foam. Let's see. We look pretty good over there. Oh, here we go. Let me get right here. Another piece here. So I'm really just kind of going around the edges. I need a floral pin to keep this from falling out. And I was out of floral pin, so I just used... Uh, a little paper clip. Let me show you how that goes in. Here's another little bald spot down in here. So I'm just gonna stick the foam in or the moss in there and use my paper clip foil pen to stab it in so it doesn't fall out. Alright, I'm just gonna keep turning it until I make sure all the spots are covered up. That's our flower arrangement. I hope you've enjoyed it. I want to show you one other trick. I'm going to be using a giant table and I'm going to have two other pumpkins on either side. And one way to tie them in together is fabric. This is just some fall colored fabric that I made into a runner. I'm going to be putting it down the table like so. I'm not even going to have it out flat. I think I'm probably going to have it like something like this. And then in between the pumpkins, I'm going to use some little tiny pumpkins and colorful acorn squash just to set in there. And that way, the whole table will look nice. Well, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy your pumpkin. Please subscribe to my channel and make a comment. I love talking to people and answering questions. And think of me the next time you need some decorating magic.